So there's been a bit of discourse lately, especially about the Mandeville Relic Quest. This has been brewing since the first step, but it became full force with the release of another interview with Yoshida. The interviewer asked if we would be getting anything new to do for the third step of the relic, with Yoshida implying things probably won't be different. Given the bugbear players have with it is that each step is 1500 tomes, twice in a row, people are taking this to mean the third step is 1500 tomes yet again. This caused quite a stir and lots of negativity because people are disappointed at it being such a boring step yet again. So naturally lots has been said and discussed in regards to this. As someone who has every relic in the game, and I mean every one, the only thing I haven't done is grind Baldesian Arsenal for Physios weapons, and I will probably do that eventually even though it does nothing. Anyway, as someone who has every relic in the game, I too see this as very disappointing. Twitter of course is a horrible dumpster fire, especially after it was picked up by an emerald mine baby who makes me look like a well-adjusted person, and I somehow have more friends too. So it isn't the most useful place for proper discussion or debate. I like pancakes means you hate waffles and all that. So I wanted to discuss this, give my feelings on the subject, and maybe instill in people the fact that there is nuance to this. This all isn't a cut and dry situation like a lot of people reacting to it are making it out to be. There is a lot more to it, and I think that needs to be emphasized. If you like what you see, be sure to support me, leave a comment, or maybe check out my streams on Twitch. I'll be streaming a lot of Tears of the Kingdom. Let's nip this right in the bud though. Yoshida didn't outright say it's 1500 tomes again. We only have speculation and very heavy hinting that it is the exact same step again. I mean, this was a question about the Mandeville weapon, which has two steps that are the exact same. Something new in that context is anything that isn't 1500 tomes. Maybe it could cost 2000 tomes, ooh! But yes, Yoshida never actually said it was going to be exactly the same. He even said he won't directly confirm or deny. Hopefully due to backlash we'll get something a bit meatier. But again, this has been brewing since the first step. This isn't new feelings entirely due to the third step. This was disappointment felt by the first step and the second step. The second step of course being more painful since it was, you know, the exact same requirement. A requirement that basically is non-existent. There is no push to actually get the relic. You can get it for free just by doing a very tiny amount of gameplay. Even with 19 relics to obtain, there's no effort at all to get them. For anyone who likes there being a grind to work on, there isn't one. On the other hand, anyone who likes free loot gets it in spades here. Obviously, if you couldn't already tell, I lean on the side of that there should be a grind. This is absolutely unfulfilling. I genuinely have put in zero effort into getting these relics, and I have them no problem. There's nothing to work toward, no effort needed. I want a reason to work for it, I want a goal to fight for. I'm far from the only one. A lot of people are goal-oriented players. Playing the game is fun and is well and good, but we're most satisfied when we're working toward some goal, self-made or otherwise, arbitrary or not. Relics tend to be one of the more directed options for a goal, and one that a lot of us have sunk deep into. Another word for people like us, but not all relic hunters, are completionists, or at the very least, achievement hunters. Wanna know what my level of goal-oriented play is like? Top 10 of the server goal-oriented. Again, not everyone goes quite this far, nor am I expecting people to, but I hope you can at least see why some people might be disappointed in there being no grind. Even people not willing to go so insanely far as I do can appreciate a solid grind. There's a lot of ways to be a goal-oriented player, with relics being one of the most obvious goals while still being casual content. Not everyone is a raider, not everyone wants that super hard content. Relics are plenty to sink your teeth into while not requiring high-end execution. It's a solid goal with effort and time to put in, and people, unsurprisingly, like that. But in the same vein, so is it unsurprising that some would not like such a grind. Let's just ignore the fact that it's casual grindy content on purpose. It's kind of the point of relics. Some people just don't have time or the inclination. They just want their loot and to enjoy what time they do get. They will self-direct their play and do what they like most. They just do not want to grind. And fair. Everyone has their own wants. But I don't know if everyone realizes what they want. 
Like I said, a lot of people are goal-oriented. I think a lot of you don't even realize it for yourselves. Have you been sitting around more? Doing nothing more? It isn't because there's less content in Endwalker. This might be the most varied in content we've ever had it. And yet there's less pull. Or so is what it looks like all the complaints are saying. Many people I've seen argue the problem is the rewards, or the content being too niche. Rewards is a goal. Once again, goal-oriented play. Relics are simple to understand, perform, and have a reward that many people want. The satisfaction of obtaining it, you felt it, haven't you? Because it wasn't free, you had to work for it, and you were glad to succeed. The reward this time around is the same. The difference is the requirements. Maybe what will help will be putting it into context to earlier relics. Let's take the Anima Relic for example. Anima Relics are the Heavensward quest line. One of the steps is the infamous Umbrite Sand Step. You needed a whole lot of Umbrite and a whole bunch of other miscellaneous items to turn the Umbrite into sand. In a 100% ideal world, you needed 60 Umbrite for one relic. But on average, you were going to need a bit more than that. Let's just keep this to 60 though for the reason I'm about to show. Each Umbrite costs 75 Poetics, but at the time it was Esoterics. For 60 Umbrite, that would be 4,500 Tomes. The same cost as Mandeville Relics being three steps of 1,500 Tomes. D wait, there's a, there's a correction in my notes. It was 300 Esoterics per Umbrite. The same cost as the Mandeville items, and you needed 60 per Relic. That's 1,800 tomes, closer to 20,000 when you consider never getting perfect RNG. For the same price, I can get 13 of the 19 Mandeville relics of what took one Anima relic. Obviously, there were people who complained about this insane cost. A lot of us, meanwhile, had no problems with it. That isn't my point, though. My point here is to show the two extremes. Many of us were glad to do it and felt satisfied with the grind. And naturally, those who don't like grind hated it. Keep in mind as well, that's only half of what the Anima Step required. There is such a wide gulf between the two extremes. That's the main nuance. One group prefers one way, one group prefers the other direction, but not everyone is vouching for it to be one way or the other. There's a huge spectrum of options between these. Speaking at just the tome cost, you could set it to be 10,000 tomes per Mandeville Relic. That would be 190,000 tomes for all 19. That would still be less tomes required than just the tome cost of the Umbrite Step for all 13 Anima Relics. The devs can absolutely build a grind that has meat to it without being as ridiculous as the Anima weapon could be. But again, there was a lot of us who were happy to do the stupid big grind. I did them all, that's for sure, and will continue to do every Relic grind but I'm also not going to say the grinds need to be that big. Let's look at the other half of that Umbrite step, the Crystal Sand portion which had many options. Most people defaulted to the Amber Encased Vilekin option. It was heavy on the leave cost, but very quick to do. But you still had all these other options. You didn't have just one option for this step. There is a middle ground, a middle ground that will maximize the people who are happy with it. One that will lead to the healthiest player base. One that keeps players engaged and active. But there seems to be some weird gatekeeping on both sides, though mostly from the people who are happy with the Mandeville weapons. Like, people acting like you're stupid for not being happy with it kind of gatekeeping. Along with some very strong copium about unofficial census data and extreme causation versus causality issues. I wonder if... something happened... After 5.3, that caused player numbers to go up? I wonder... I... wonder... If the game is in a golden period, numbers should be higher, yeah. But the numbers argued about are barely higher. Given how huge a boost we had, we should be looking for even bigger numbers than that. We can't directly compare numbers anyway. Shadowbringers were Shadowbringers. Endwalker is Endwalker. This is play account not Relic Grind account, and we can't compare these numbers to the version of XIV where there is a grindy Endwalker Relic. The gatekeeping also ignores the main point, a healthy player base. Player count alone is not healthy. Not when there are many players who aren't actively doing anything. What percentage of each of these is sitting AFK in Limsa? That's the main point. Relics lead people to do content. 
They lead players to interact with other players. They lead to many other things beyond just a shiny weapon at the end of the day. What does the Mandeville weapon lead to? Nothing. You don't need to grind to get them so far, even a little. You don't need to put in any effort. Do hunts when they spawn, maybe do your dailies, though I don't. Play like the relics don't even exist. They don't exist, and yet they somehow end up in your inventory. Relics can be used like Moogle Tomes have been, fill queues for content that usually has issues, not reward players for sitting AFK in town. This isn't to judge people who do. You do you. If AFKing in Limsa is actually a fun idea for you, keep doing it. But can you really see this as healthy for the game as a whole if everyone is doing it? Not even chatting, but just sitting still waiting for the next hunt spawn or what have you? Sure, it pans the player count on a census that everyone agrees should be taken with a grain of salt, but it doesn't fill cues for players progressing through the game. It doesn't push people into interactions like even Eureka and Bogia did. That is the crux of the issue. That is what people mean when they're talking about healthy player bases. They're not just talking numbers, they're talking what players actually do. Relics encourage and sometimes force you out of your routine. Routine is how you get into a rut and burn out quicker. And given how much people are struggling to continue to happily play, this seems like what is happening, a rut into burnout. Nothing to push people out of their routines, out of their ruts. Getting players running through different content types fills queues and makes queues more varied. How many of you are sick and tired of Crystal Tower Roulette? Would the Mandeville Relic making us do Shadow of Mock Raids be so terrible? Getting us out there doing Fates is half the reason many people have Blue Mage. Would doing 70 Fates be so awful to make the world more active again? 70? That's it? That, that's a little! Have you not heard of the Yokai Watch event? Holy crap, you would die if 70 is a lot of fates to you. <clears throat> Relics are a very good tool for this purpose. Tome grinds aren't the only way to do it either. One person suggested even making one step just be wondrous tales with some adjustments. Do a bunch of tasks out of a list. Get an item. Repeat a few times. This is a better version of Zodiac books which had fixed targets. Or light farms. You can go out of your way and grind the most efficient light option, follow the light bonuses with one of the trackers people will make, or just freestyle it. There's so many other things you can do beyond just grind tomes. They can come up with brand new options, reuse old options, anything beyond just what we got. The point is, there's relic farms that aren't ridiculous, relic farms that direct us into doing different things. Variety. Even with 50, 60, 70, 80 roulette, you often get some of the same dungeons over and over. At least I do. Got the Fractal Continuum twice in one week a month ago. Neither of them were new players. I love that dungeon, but it kind of proves the point. We have so many dungeons, so much content, but how often do we see most of it? How is that less engaging than doing the same two expert dungeons over and over? How is that more engaging than grinding fates here and there, hanging out with people? So many people end up complaining that dungeon runs are quiet even when they try to start conversations. Some of the best moments in this game were back in A Realm Reborn. Fate farming was the arguably best way to grind DPS jobs the moment you could do them in Curthus Central Highlands. People would chat, make jokes, all that good stuff. Then the moment the Savara fate chain spawned, everyone would freak out! It was entertaining, it was social, it was far more engaging than literally doing nothing. Like, I don't get it. People aren't asking specifically for a repeat of anything in specific. Just for it to be an actual step with even a little bit of effort. How is literally anything else inherently the worst option? That's why I wanted to point out nuance, because that's the weirdest hill to die on. And let me also say, no matter how many times Yoshida says, or is right to say, that breaks from the game are good, will it ever be an excuse to make stuff less interesting or potentially engaging. Which gets back to healthy player bases. I'm seeing so many people burnt out in Endwalker and have no unique thing to work on. Would they still be burnt out with a proper relic? We have no way to know for sure, but hanging out and enjoying doing stupid things for the relic? That sounds like a fun time. Sounds like something to keep variety and not burn me out. Then there's all the other people and their thoughts on the matter. This is just my viewpoints. They can have their own ideas, thoughts, goals. They're not looking to have their time wasted. 
They're looking for direction and a goal in a game they enjoy playing and believe that is healthy for the game and players. You don't have to like it, but stop acting like people hoping for more are idiots. Besides, Stahl has the best option. Island farming, let's go! Thanks for watching, and I hope this explained a bit of what people are saying when they are unhappy about No New Relic for Endwalker. And further, this is just my viewpoint. There's a lot more to think about and believe when it comes to this content. I'm just one of the people who feel there needs to be more. If you enjoyed this overview, please rate, comment, subscribe, all that. Maybe come check out my Twitch for streaming different things. Take care, and may the power of unedited hogs lay waste to your enemies. And an extra special thanks to everyone who supports me on Patreon. Extra special thanks to the big dragons who are Eamon Al Khatib, Benjamin Han, Benjamin Rice, Bergy, Karsten Wayware, Ethan W, Fraser97, Henny G, James Hall, Deucen Grout, Jeremy Abbott, Jericho, Kevin Lowe, Mizella, Shimmering Blaze, T Rogue, Timmy, and Zero Two. Thanks again. See you around.